If a rabbit refuses food, it can quickly become an emergency. At home, Dad set up a cage in the living room. Mom picked up some parsley from our garden to add to the carrot pellet, pellets and Timothy, hay, and Timothy hay that the store clerk had sold us. I got a plastic bin for the hay and Owen found a water bowl. Welcome to the wildlife bed and breakfast, he told the bunny. This rabbit seems to be very comfortable with people, Mom remarked as she ran her hands over him, looking for injuries. It was true. The rabbit had it scorned when Dad checked to see if he was a boy or a girl. A boy! Or when I held him and Owen looked through his fur for ticks and fleas. He even stayed calm as Molly and Maggie gave him a quick sniff. But as soon as I put him in the cage, he crawled on his belly to the corner and then hunched his back like a furry bowling ball. I slid a piece of carrot closer. Give him some time, Dad said. He's been through a lot today. He'll probably eat if we leave him alone. What if he doesn't? I asked. Dad shrugged. You know how it is with animals, Em. Some things aren't ours to decide. We do our best, but the rest is up to him. The rabbit stayed hunched in the corner of the cage, only his little nose moved, opening and closing with each breath. Emma and I'll take him to the animal shelter in Wrangley after school, Dad, and Dad told Mom. Then he looked at me, but if he hasn't eaten anything by morning, I want to take him as soon as the shelter opens, okay? Rabbits can go downhill fast if they don't eat. I nodded. I bet he'd be happier in my room. The rabbit's ear closest to me slanted toward the sound of my voice. He's fine right where he is, Mom said firmly. You need a good night's sleep, Emma. Yeah, Owen said. You should get some sleep. I wrinkled my nose like he, he, I wrinkled my nose like he smelled bad. Owen never used to, t to take Mom and Dad's side over mine. By bedtime, the rabbit still hadn't eaten anything. I pushed the carrot up to his front paws so he didn't even have to stretch to reach it. He turned his head away. My heart felt heavy as I went upstairs. The worries about school were bo boosted up with extra worries about the rabbit. He trusted me, and now he was alone in a cage. Scared was pulling ahead of excited now. In my room, I emptied my backpack so I could see all my new stuff and gave me excited and give excited some help. Everything was new. Planner, folders, notebooks, water bottle, cute erasers, pencils, colored and regular, pencil sharpener, markers, highlighters, post-its, several colors, tissues, lip gloss, ponytail holder to put my hair back for gym and recess, and a pear scented hand sanitizer. I had watched online videos of other kids getting ready for school and had bought everything they suggested. I really wish those kids were in my class because they all seemed friendly. None of them lived in Maine, though. So I hope what they suggested worked here, too. It had been fun to go back to school shopping for the first time. I had always had some new things to start each year, but I never spent so much time planning what I'd wear. While homeschooling, while homeschooling I'd just see what I felt like wearing that day. But now it seemed important to look interesting, but not too different. For tomorrow, I'd picked out jeans, orange sneakers, and a blue t-shirt with a golden retriever on it. I figured if a kid said something about my shirt, I could start a conversation about Molly and Maggie instead of just saying, thanks. I wished I could, I wish, I wished I could wear the leather boots I had bought, but, but the mornings were almost cold enough for frost, afternoons were still hot. In homeschool, I could have just changed with the weather, but now I had to pick something to last the whole day. It was exciting to have so many new things, but when I changed into my pajamas and shut off the light, scared was waiting for me. What if I didn't know something important? Or I did something embarrassing like forget to zip my backpack and everything spilled out on the bus. Or I accidentally squirted my new hand sanitizer all over my jeans and reeked of pears for the rest of the day. Pretty soon I was worried about everything. Outside, a box barked in the woods. It always sounds like an angry scream. Maybe Monsieur Renard had recovered that Monsieur Lapin had escaped him yet again. 
Maybe Mansur Renard had discovered that Mansur Lapin had escaped him yet again. I wished I knew if the rabbit had eaten. What if he was scared to the fox bark and thinking I'd abandon him, that he just traded one way of being stuck for another? I couldn't bear the idea that I'd rescued him, only to have him die alone and afraid in our living room. I grabbed my flashlight and tiptoed down the dark stairs so I wouldn't wake mom and dad. The rabbit looked wary as my flashlight beam touched him in the corner of the cage. The carrot was right there where I left it at his feet. The rabbit kicked a little as I slid my hand under him and pulled him out of the cage, but he calmed down as I held him against my chest. He was small enough to hold with one arm, so I dropped the carrot, the parsley, droopy now, and my flashlight into the, my bathrobe pocket. I set the water bowl into his babe into his hay bin and carried everything upstairs. Maybe dad was right that some things aren't ours to decide, but other things are. After I closed my bedroom door behind me, I set the rabbit on the braided rug in front of my dresser. I wish I could just let him hop around my room all night, but rabbits are chewers. So I dumped the clothes out of my pink plastic laundry basket and lined the bottom with a towel to make it comfy. Then I put the water bowl, food, and hay bin in the corners of the basket and pushed it up beside my bed. We'd done that when Molly and, and Maggie were tiny puppies so we could reach down and pet them if they, were whim if they whimpered in the night. It seemed like a perfect plan, but when I turned around, the rug was empty. Two back feet and a pup tail were disappearing under my dresser. Uh-oh, I dropped to my knees. The rabbit was way underneath. He gave a tiny sneeze. Sorry, I said. Did you find some dust bunnies to play with? He wiggled out and I tried to catch him. Rabbit Wrangler to the rescue. He was fast as a cartoon character, though. He'd hop in one direction and just as I reached for him, suddenly he'd twist his body almost in half and race the other way. It took three tries and a few scratches before I got my palm on his back. He flattened himself on the floor, and I wrapped my hands around his middle, carrying him to the laundry basket. I kissed the top of his head. His ears were so warm. I wanted to cuddle him, but it was almost midnight now, and my alarm was set for six. Time for bed. In the laundry basket, he sniffed the plastic sides and pushed his nose into the vents. He dug into a corner and bunched up the towel. Then he rose on his hind legs and put his front paws on the top edge of the basket. He wasn't heavy enough to tip it over, but one back foot went into the dish wash, into his water dish. I couldn't help giggling. Then he gave a big hop right out of the basket. Oh no, the two long hops and he was under the nightstand. He started to chew the cord to my lamp. No, as I reached for him, he went under my bed. Then I had an idea. I took everything out of the laundry basket and sat on the edge of my bed. Holding the basket upside down on my knees, I waited until the rabbit came out from under the bed. I pretended I wasn't paying attention to him, but the next time he hopped past, I dropped the laundry basket over him like a big pink plastic tent. He had plenty of air with all vents and he couldn't hop out. Lifting one edge of the basket, I slid the hay bin and water bowl underneath. I pushed the carrot and the droopy parsley through, the, through a vent. But as I climbed into bed, the laundry basket started moving across the floor. The rabbit was pushing it with his nose. His water would probably get spilled, but I smelled anyway as I turned off the light. I listened to the soft scrape of the laundry basket on the floor. Tomorrow, everything would change. A yellow bus would stop at the end of our driveway for me, and Dad and and Dad I and Dad I take the rabbit to the shelter after school. But for this warm, dark moment, none of that happened yet. I heard a clumping sound, like two wood blocks softly hitting each other. I clicked on my flashlight and saw some of the parsley wiggling from the rabbit's mouth. He was eating. I was so relieved that I laughed. I wondered, I wondered if he'd still be under the laundry basket when I woke up. Maybe he'd figure a way out and I'd find him in the closet or under my bed or beneath my dresser playing with the dust bunnies. 
Or if he really were Monsieur Lapin, he'd trick us all. He'd squeeze out from under the laundry basket and spring up and away through an open window with quite a story to tell the other animals. Silly Monsieur Lapin, they'd say. Why are you always in trouble? But he'd grin, knowing he was the one with a full belly of parsley and carrots. Good night, Monsieur Lapin, I whispered, turning off my flashlight.